Morning. Morning. I've realised I'm not happy with what I'm drinking. All right, go and sort yourself out then. I don't want a herbal tea. Great. I never, I never understand the appeal of them anyway. It of... is actually a really good way to start your day. And I do usually like my tea, but it's like, this is going to be quite a problem if we're going to do coffee moaning at 9.30. Would you want to call it herbal healing? No, no, it's just because I usually save my coffee until 11. But I can't uh, have coffee at 9.30. Why the hell not? Are you funny like that about what you drink at what time? Oh, my God. I've never known anyone more yeah, contrary than you. I really am. Well, because I know... It's healthy. But that's the first sign of old age, you know that. To start the day. No, it's the first sign of wanting to have a healthy no. old age by looking after yourself. It's, no, look but at around, my dad. around something as look banal as just a, a morning at, drink. Look, but look at my dad. My dad's yeah, constitution dad's isn't the strongest constitution. He's had diabetes, he's had heart problems and everything. My dad is as amazing as he is because at 87, he's done all this N stuff. There is so I can't help it because I've grown up looking, yeah, no, no, looking course, watching this. But I could say Nanny Thelma lived to the ripe old age of 93. But she oh, but didn't... there's always an anomaly, anomaly, anomaly. anomaly like your, that. You, you, does your mum drink healthily every morning? No, she's terrible. She yeah, has a black tea a, and a fryer. We've, <laughs> we've got more examples of waking up unhealthily and living for longer than, than healthily. I, I agree. I'm just saying, as your husband, it's interesting watching you slowly morph into that early pensioner m m mode. It's weird. It's weird because that's when the, the age gap really begins to kick in. <laughs> That'll stop her. Go and get yourself a bloody coffee and join me and have a laugh. I don't Jesus, want a coffee. you used to wake up and smoke a cigarette. Hot water saves lives, exactly, Recky. He's... Exactly. Good morning, oh, guys. Oh, dandelion fluff on a fork. Happy Millie birthday Parfit is... to you. Oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. I love your happy name. Happy birthday, dear dandelion, dandelion fluff, fluff on a fork. On a fork. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Fluff on a fork. Thank you. Fluff on okay, a fork. Are you getting the whiff of fox every now and then? It's well, so... What Dina was there? and I are going to jet wash that because I think they've been pissing on the outside there. And listen, guys, I'm going to film some of it for the vlog, so... You can look forward to that one. Ross Donnelly. Fierce. I think just out there it's sticky with fox. Yeah, no, but it hasn't been for ages. Chi Chi has been guarding the premises, but it feels like last night she didn't. Um, coffee is very good for you, Catherine Clausen. Oh, no, God, I know, absolutely. And I think part of why I've got such a bad memory, though, there's lots of reasons why I've got a mem bad memory, is because I spent my whole adult life not drinking coffee because I didn't like it. Mark always drinks coffee. Most people I know that drink coffee have a really good memory. And you actually said it's proven in the prevention it's of absolutely, Alzheimer's. absolutely proven in the prevention of Alzheimer's. But, obviously, you know what it does. don't overdo it. No, well, no. The downside of it is, is that it can enforce upon you the same symptoms as depression if too much of it is had in a day. Yeah. But there are a number of caveats to that. The quality of your coffee. Oh, yeah. Oh, like when we say it helps Alzheimer's, helps function the brain, it, that's not instant coffee or freeze dried no. coffee. It has no. to be really good quality ground so, yeah, coffee. You, you, so it's quality and it's also concentration of, of stuff. So that's why I was buying now, that organic. One of the best things you can do with a double espresso is as the Italians do, and Nadia's always been banging on about it, is have a glass of water with it just to sort of like, you know, basically dilute it. But I don't like an Americano. I find it a really insipid version of the espresso. Like I've never liked it. It's basically an espresso with water in it. But but you know that but like your brain function can reduce by that quite a significant percentage if your body is dehydrated. So yes. yeah. you absolutely so, should have a pint of water, half a pint of water. So in a sense, where coffee get, where coffee isn't good for you is, is how it impacts, yeah, on sort of uh, dehydration. You've often said it I mean it's a hunger staver offer for me as well. Um, but all of those things can lead to other problems, as you always say. It can lead to binging late in the day, it can lead to spikes in sugar level, all that kind of stuff. But the coffee itself, what it does is, uh, outside, uh, Alzheimer's and memory loss is all about plaque in the brain. Um, oh, and that. the generational plaque, just like the generational plaque in our veins, you know, with heart disease. It's the same. Yeah, it is the well, same. Well, if you've got vascular dementia, yeah. it depends. But, um, this zaps it. But whenever you're abroad, if you notice, they always be that question. They bring you yeah. a cup of coffee with a glass of water next to it. But Leslie, yes, my husband is Arab and loves his coffee. I'm, I'm leap yeah. it, leap it. I'm a coffee addict. Are you a coffee addict, Leah? You know that. You can't have a brain like his and not be a coffee addict. Yeah, he's got a good memory. See, another person that's got a good memory that drinks coffee, shit, I need a coffee. This is going to be my first of eight today. Melanie B, good morning. Just finished doing the Dr. Zach Bush exercises. After two weeks, I feel so much better. So thank you, Nad. Surprising what a difference. It's extraordinary, isn't it? I did it, but I nearly I dislocated have... my shoulder. Oh, my God. Every day, my waist gets smaller, and that's good. But it's my cardiovascular. 
because it was weird. I was showing somebody the other day and they got really out of breath really mm. quickly. And I did at the beginning, but now... No, I haven't even had a chance to really peruse your shape, shapeliness, recently. Do you so think I've lost weight? Well, when I, when I see you, you sort of slob around in sort of slobby clothes, though. But when you wear something tighter... Is there anything else you want to say to me this No, no, morning? I don't mean it. I'm saying... I'm you're a slob. No, no, you're a, pe you're a slobby pensioner. That's what you're becoming. But you just need to... When you wear tight clothes and, and don't drink herbal tea, you're great fun to be with. <laughs> when you're not a little shit, yeah. you're almost all right. Um, I, I think having herbal tea is like licking the sandal of a sweaty hippie. But you know what? You, you are. Yes, I did, but it didn't impress me at all. That's why I just It's a good I one, guys. On. I'm giving you that one for free. Lee, but don't you agree? It's like licking of, the sandal of a sweaty hippie. You're one of those hippie. really predictable people that goes, oh, salad, rabbit food. It's just not... No, I don't not, say rabbit you food. Do. I say grass. You do. You do. Grass. It's like eating grass. It is like eating grass. I mean, it, the, okay, here's the thing. I'm going to say something bold so about salad. So it's salads. always thing, trying no, to no, get no, no, to no, be no. healthy. That salad you made me the other week, was, which was in the vlog, was absolutely phenomenal. It was phenomenal. The lamb's lettuce, the cheese, the nuts, and all that kind of stuff. But it was meaty and it was male. Because it, it had meat, nuts, and cheese in it. All right, well, whatever. But here's the thing. Why haven't they invented any kind of cutlery or utensil to easily pick up salad? When I go for salad now, I think I'll just use my fingers because nothing Ma, goes on the fork. The problem is, is because you want to shovel food. No, we don't. You do, yes, you do. I it's want the you layers. Can't get the whole I want bowl the layers of mouth. the lettuce in my mouth. I don't want one spindly thing that tastes like okay, I've got a piece of Okay. Well, I shall give you some some salad. Go and tosses. get yourself a coffee. Go on. I beg your pardon. Salad. Tosses. Oh, salad tosses. Uh, can I give you some good news? Would you like some good yeah. news? I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Nadia so high up up there. Some oh no, it's because I can't see. You're that. looking right up there. I'm gonna give Nadia some absolutely brilliant news. Look at that. Plants drug, new treatment halts tumor growth. A wow. drug that could stop cancer cells repairing themselves has shown oh early God. signs of walk it working. More than half of the 40 patients given Burzo Sertib had the growth of their tumors halted. This is major halted. news. Halted. Halted. But what kind of cancer was it? I wonder if it's just one particular it's kind of cancer. It's about the blocking the protein in all cancers. No. Yes, it's this part is of a branch of treatment news. known as precision medicine, which targets specific genes. Is this, this is, on the BBC website? This is a BBC website, but it's the third most trending news story of the day. And I can see why. It's thank God we can hear something that attends to the many health conditions that we've all other been worrying than about. Yeah, other, other than COVID. Other than COVID. Exactly, other than COVID. So I just thought that was remarkable news. Now, you're very holistic, and there's a lot of people who believe in the pros and cons of chemotherapy and what have you. When you hear a story like that, do you auto do, do, do holistic people excited. automatically kind no. of get a bit ooh, or do they? I get excited. Oh, you do? I mean, no. extreme holistic people would. They are dubious about all medicine. I definitely am not. I am yeah. complementary medicine. I mean, you know me. Uh, you've probably seen me go to the doctor three times in twenty in eighteen years. Yeah, that's times. true. That's true. And each so time, so everything yeah. I treat with homeopathy, but and each time was for an STD, wasn't it? That's weird. I'm a geriatric <laughs> slob with STDs. <laughs> Who drinks drinks that taste of hippie Grass. sandals? No hippie sandals. <laughs> um, um, it's just yeah, but I do <laughs> I do see it as complementary medicine, and I've got really good homeopathy. If it's something she thinks you need to go and see a doctor for, she will say it. But yeah. most things that I've had have been treated wow. homeopathically. It is a weird story. There's nothing to this story. So I'm can I just, just sorry, read, go, yeah, can go we back, just of double find out about that? Because lots of people are going to be interested. It's definitely not about a particular kind of cancers because often these no. things will come through and it's just it's, No, one. it's good. It's a generic approach to, to cancer cells, the protein in a cancer cell. So I mean, it kills, so, so it, what does it do? Dest precision medicine targets specific? Presents cancers from mending damage to their own cells. So if you, if you can, with chemo or something, to destroy oh, because it the does cancer it and then cell, it, can, it, can... it, can't, it can't rejuvenate. Wow. So it's like as you start to remove it, you remove Very it. Very promising. This study involved a small number of patients, therefore it's too early to consider as a game changer in cancer. Nevertheless, the unusually strong effects, especially in combination with conventional chemotherapy, could reason it's to be optimistic. It's been treated on bowel skin. and over ovarian cancer. Wow. Uh, Oh, look, someone's remained cancer-free for two years afterwards. I wonder if, a while back now, we had somebody come into on, on the show and lose women, one of our breast cancer specials, and she'd been, she was at end of life. She mm. had three children, three young children, Breaking and she cancer, decided to go on to this trial. Yeah. And, yeah, phenomenal results, like 
she, you wouldn't even know she was ill when you looked at her. I wonder if it was that. Mm, maybe, yeah. Um, the other big story in the news today is the really tragic, tragic story oh of Liz Hurley's um, ex-partner and film producer, Steve Bing. Tell us, you, you know the story. So um, apparently, so they say that he jumped out of the 27th floor, wind, out of the window, in his 27th floor window. In LA. In LA. And they are saying that this is down to him being depressed about not having enough human contact through COVID. Now, you might not know who Steve Bing is, but I certainly remember the story uh, around the time Liz Hurley um, got pregnant with him. Because he her was, son, he's, her son's father. Yeah, he's a movie producer, isn't yeah, he? He's yeah, a movie, well, all sorts of different things. He's well, a he philanthropist, did, Yeah, he did. He's, he? he's mates with uh, the Clintons and I think the Apple guy and, uh, and also... He's, uh, he's, tight, uh, he's, he's worth about almost 600 million. He's yes. very, very wealthy. Yeah. And what I remember is at the time when Elizabeth Hurley had, was pregnant with her, had mm. a baby, and he very public, now I just thought, oh, I don't like you. He very publicly said, oh, it's not my baby. It wasn't an exclusive oh, yes. relationship. Yes, yes, If yes. she wants to be a single parent, she can be. But oh, I, I remember that. And so then she got the DNA test done. And of course, he looked so like him. Herself. Right, right. So like him. Um, so it must be really mixed emotions, I would imagine, for her and her son. Today. Oh, my God, massively, massively. And also, of course, uh, you know, anyone affected by issues of suicide, uh, the Samaritans. Now, a lot well, of people... Mark, were... This family, Mark and I, have been touched too many times by the horrors of suicide. We yeah. know too many people that have killed themselves. And so whenever a story comes up about suicide, it certainly triggers feelings in me. Yeah. So, and, I, and so I worry about when stories like this come out because I know that... Yeah, a lot of people can be in a either dangerous place because they've had thoughts or they, it can trigger the feelings of somebody that's lost somebody. So again, mm. like we always say, the best place to go for that is the Samaritans. Now, a number and, of people were talking about yeah. struggling to get through and I saw uh, attached to the story on Steve Bing, actually, that there is an email address if you're struggling to get through. And the email address is joe, J-O, at samaritans.org. J O at Samaritans.org in the UK. In the US, call the Samaritans branch in your area or dial 1 800 273 talk. Um, so, you know, it's just another. Yeah, and and, 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 and. and I mean, of course, you never know the real true story behind a suicide. God knows. I mean, they're saying it's down to his depression, not seeing people. But how on earth can they know? Well, I mean, the poor man only did this. Was it, yes, was it yesterday? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so nobody no can of... know. But just, we just thought we would talk about it because we know that it can these things can be a trigger for people so yeah if you are triggered in any way by this story that's going to be everywhere yeah um then yeah god my heart goes joseph out hilditch, to her, his I'm, sons jo joseph, his children yeah joseph hilditch i might have to contact them today so the, 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 hear what we just said as well do, if you can't get through on the phone line do do email joe at samaritans.org it's another way through uh, stay on your phone stay near your your device or whatever um it is a challenging time, and, and, and again, I, I am really, if I'm really honest, knowing how my mental health goes through these highs and lows, I've always felt that, you know, it's the old adage that when you're in the Himalayas, you know, coming down the mountain is often more dangerous than going up. I think we were all very united in our sort of dealing with the crisis and entering the crisis, and I think as we come out of the crisis, mm -hmm. What concerns me about our dash, a little bit like the Hunger Games, our dash for the, for, new, for the new normal or just a return of the normal, is that those who are, you know, traditionally and perhaps mentally more, more stable or more robust are going to be able to dash back to their lives as normally as possible. And I do think we need to spare a thought for those people for whom mental health issues have been created in lockdown, for those people whose mental health conditions have got worse in lockdown, and um, and how it might and for actually those be... people that actually have mental health conditions have they've had a bit of respite from yeah, in yeah. lockdown because they haven't had the stress yeah. of the social Absolutely. situations and yeah. all of that. So I think for some people it's going to be an unusual moment because I think for a lot of people I feel like I feel a bit like it. that. Mental health issues as, as conscious issues may have dissipated a bit during this crisis because we're all in it together. There's only so much we can do. There's no, as someone very articulately said at the, in the early days, there's no shoulds coming down. I should be doing this, I should be doing that, I should be... Yeah, and now, really all the that. shoulds are starting Stop to come back. Crashing. And I think it's really important that we all hold hands, metaphorically and literally, because of the social distancing, um, as we all step out. Because some people are going to be very able to run back to the bars, the pubs, the cinemas, the da 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 da, -da and just get on with their life, and obviously to families, and, and have big social networks to plug back into. But a lot of people are going to... 
you know, not have that or find it a real struggle. So, and it's just interesting. I think in a weird way, you know, stories like Paul Steve Bing's there, it doesn't matter what your conditions of wealth or comfort are. It just, this is a, this it's mental the pain illness. Gets yeah, the pain gets too much. pain gets too much, yeah, yeah. But at the darkest times, when you can see no light, if you can reach out, you never know. Yeah. Somebody might be able to show you a pinhole of light, and there are many people that have had these thoughts and are so grateful that they didn't do anything. So, yeah, yeah reach out to the professionals. And as Darren Boy rightly says, he's been there before with suicidal thoughts and attempts. It's a horrible place to be. I have Samaritans on speed dial. Just pop it in your phone. Yeah. There's no this does, shame. If they do save lives. They yeah. literally do save yeah. lives. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a really tragic story. I really want to be a Samaritan. Yeah. I'm yeah, really going to look into one. that. I think it'd be a great one. Um, on, in other news, I think it's going to be a big announcement, I think, from Boris today, at, in, tonight. Uh, it's going to be the biggie. I think it's going to be a two-metre rule out the window. This is my predictions, and from what I'm hearing, I think the two-metre rule is going to be gone. What do you think about that? Um, I think... Uh, what do I think about it? I just think it has to happen. But what do you actually... What, what, what do you think now about COVID? What do you actually think? Part of me, like I said last night, still has all the same anxiety and all the same beliefs that it was something that was way worse than the yeah. flu and all these things. But because I'm reading a lot of alternative opinions, not from wackos, not from conspiracy th theorists, I am really torn. And I feel, sometimes I feel, have the governments across the world got to keep maintaining what they said at the beginning because of this, because they went to lockdown. And, and believe you me, I don't blame them for going to lockdown or doing what they did because it was all so scary. But now I just don't know. And because of that, I don't know what to believe with the governments because I don't know, like when they say to us, yeah, you know, yesterday infection rates are so, so low, but, but you know, everyone's got to stay, you can have six people in your house, but you've all got to have social distance. I'm thinking, it just seems like a pick and mix, mm. a patchwork quilt with a load of holes in it. And I don't really know whether I should still be completely masked because I don't believe what they're saying now because I don't know whether it's just about mm -hmm. getting the economy mm -hmm. back on its feet or whether the whole thing was massively blown out of proportion. Does anybody else feel like that? Mm. With no real answers. I mean, I think more and more people are coming to a middle ground, but there's still a lot of people that are either one camp or the other, mm. aren't they, that right from the beginning said it was massively overblown and then we've still got the other camp that totally believe we should all be in lockdown. If I'm really honest, and this isn't a conspiracy theory, I think this is how governments in the West have to operate. As Anne Murray says, they're not reducing the distance because of the COVID, it's for the economy. And I think mm. what's at work here is a very low level um, Manip man brain manipulation, and, I, I, and I, not from some sinister kind of communist. No, but because of, they've got to. But do because it. they've got to convince got us. Got to help to, us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's not beat around the bush. Regardless of, of the sort of hyperbole and rhetoric of the, um, you know, the Bank of England in the last couple of days saying that the government were on their knees, virtually bankrupt. We, you know, we are in an unprecedented. Did they really need to say that? As well, well, no, no. I mean, I do think some of this no. inflammatory. But it does make. Let me just say, it, do, it does make sense of what became a kind of nigh-on panic-stricken reversal and managing and delimiting of everything. But you know, a government can't sustain an entire population from not going to work. Delimiting a word. Well, I've used it, yeah. Um, I don't think it's a word. <coughs> delimited. It's, it's like a contradiction. Unlimited. Delimiting, limiting. No, you're right. Um, so. It's very pedantic, isn't no, it? No, no, it's just quite interesting. No, no, no. Always well, that when you, pernicity. You're always teaching me new words. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I thought, because no. I was listening to it, because he's got such an amazing vocabulary. Delimited, do you? Oh, right. um, doesn't make any sense. The point, being, the point being is that obviously there was a, enough of a pinch point or a crisis for the government. And what we're going through now, as you rightly say, Anne Murray, is that this isn't about how, how prevalent the illness is. This isn't about our likelihood, likelihood to get it. I think lots more people are going to get it. A, the vast majority of people don't get it badly. 80% of people. Yeah, and, and I think that this Only is just about... Uh, this is about trying to sell to us the idea that it's OK, which is why it's happening in such graduated terms. It's why I mean, it's, it what about all this stuff that we hear? That if we were to hear on a day, get a daily death count of people that died of the flu, it would be very similar to what we've been hearing with. Mm, mm. What, what, what do we think about all of that? Mm. 50,000 extra people died of the flu last year. We didn't even know. We didn't even know. Mm. We didn't know that, and yet we know, everybody knows the figures for COVID. I think if we got a second wave, I would really hope that we wouldn't have this daily death count thing. Yeah. Or if we did, that it was matched along the recovery rates and people leaving the hospital. Because I don't think, 
I think we can cope with more of this stuff. We can't cope with the level of terror that they put on everybody. I think that's mm. been so debilitating. Mm. And I think we will have to gather ourselves. I think to a degree we are all a bit of PTSD. We're all exhausted. We're all like, you know, in our different ways, garnering strength to get back in whatever way we get back to life. Mm. And if they come back at us with terrorising... <laughs> I, Death I, I personally think and I just think yeah. people will find it very difficult to do that all again. I, well, I'll tell you what I think is going to happen when there is like a return. If this becomes a seasonal bug, I think when the return happens, they are going to be so self aware of how they don't frighten us all so that we all are happier to stay in work. That's yeah. what I think they'll do. They're just massaging the facts. They're massaging us. They're getting us used to things. And that's fine. They would have do, taken do, advice from psychologists. Yeah. They would have said, yeah. because I remember them saying that they were quoting Boris, weren't they, sort of backstage, that he'd said, oh, it's very easy to get people to come in, but it's going to yeah. be extremely difficult to get people out. As Gemma Pee says, when yeah. they follow the science, it's not just chemistry. They do mean the science social, of social people, science, yeah. and behaviour. Uh, exactly. And I think, actually he would have done away with the two-metre rule. The masks thing, I think, is another false sense of security for us. I mean, I went out yesterday and the other day for my first time, properly, in shops and stuff, and I had a mask on. And the first 10 minutes, I was really nervous, and then I thought, oh, well, I'm all right, I've got my mask on. But I know that the mask doesn't stop you getting yeah, COVID. Yeah. We've been told that. But somewhere in me, psychologically, it worked, and yeah, it got me out yeah. the door. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, they will never go into lockdown ever again regardless of what happens. Um, and I think we are going to accept that potentially our life expectancy as a, popu as, a, as a human across the globe in all countries is going to go down somewhat as this becomes just another possible way that you can, that, die. That you can die like it is with like the Like there's a million other ways. Yeah, 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 absolutely. James McMahon says, on Facebook, I'm part of a page called Nottingham COVID-19 Mutual Aid. They've helped me so much in different situations. Online superhero and super heroines. Well, let's just do a shout out for them. Yeah. Nottingham COVID-19 mutual, mutual aid. Good for you. Aid. Well done, guys. Uh, I think it's become the reality, Holly. Hi, Holly. That now many shielding people have the same threat from the flu and won't get four months off work. So the government needs to be realistic about the response. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think, Holly? Our immunologist is now passed all her exams is going to off to study medicine. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. What do you actually think about it all now? I don't think they will, Jane M. I don't think they'll lock us down for a second time later this year. I absolutely, they will not be able to afford it. And Can't I, afford it. I think the cost in life is going to have, is, is the trade-off, unfortunately, is going to be the cost in life. I think they'll do little, they might do they little might do pockets of lockdowns. lockdowns. Yeah, I think they yeah, might do yeah. that. But there but will not be a lockdown. here we go again. We've got to have a good track and trace system for them to be able to do that oh, so they know farcical, where the pockets are. We are an embarrassment. Yeah, an absolute This country's farce. an embarrassment when you think how many other countries have yeah. got this sorted. Yeah, yeah. We were just too full of ourselves. Oh, we'll be. And America don't have their track and trace sorted no. either, do they? No, not at all. And all the countries that keep blowing up are the countries that don't have that. Yeah. Uh, time, Mummy, I can see you're struggling again, darling. Um, again, if you can't. Um, if you can't reach out to any of the sort of mental health emergency services, if you like, like the Samaritans, what have you. Contact your GP. Please contact you your need GP. to see somebody today. Is it 911 for, um, what is the number? 111 for NHS helpline. You, know, you need to support. Well, what? the GPs are open now. I would, yeah. I would talk to your GP. And one of the other things, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't be cruel to be kind, but I think if you, you might have friends in this chat room that you can talk to outside of this chat room please do but equally if you if you can spend time here writing this you need to be saying this to someone who can actively help you um, yeah, we can only really tell you to do. go somewhere but even the act of writing what you've just written there which is heartbreaking to read you need to be saying that to someone else who you need to be saying you. it to someone who can help you um, because you've got the technology because you've got the coverage you've obviously got wi-fi you've got the articulacy you can say what you're feeling so i think you know, even if you've got in touch with them and it hasn't worked yet, get in touch with them again. There is no problem with that. And also try a number of other routes. Try your local GP, uh, you know, in a worst case scenario. You, you know, you, you, if you're in a worst case scenario, you go to an A&E department, you, you need to see someone and talk to someone. Yeah, but it's really important. Much better that you do that. Unless coming here, you can reach out after this and get some sort of help. But you and need professional social care. help. You need professional help. Yeah, yeah. please reach out. We can out. only do please. so much, I'm, you know, yeah. here, sorry. Um, yeah, go to your GP and a number of people are saying. I think your GP is your next stop. If you're not getting any answers from yeah. 
Samaritans, you need to speak to your G GP yeah. as an emergency. Exactly. And see people. If you're actively anyone ever suicidal, you call 999 straight away. Yeah. Um, Holly, lockdown will never happen again. People may be scared now, but the knowledge of how isolating it was will still will we'll stop, stop people, people following, following any extreme rules. rules. I don't think seasonal in any way, in any significant, significant way. way. I don't think seasonal in any significant no. way. What do you mean? I don't know what that means. No, Jim. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think maybe uh, you don't think it's going to come back seasonally. I don't know. Maybe. Um, so yeah, uh, the other news today is always also that I think news is going to be announced about what's happening with cinemas and uh, potentially theatres. I think there's going to be a huge. Uh, and I'm so pleased about this because there's um, uh, Maddie is is starting potentially some Zoom classes with an ex actor at the RSC. Actors are having to diversify into yeah. new, new lines of revenue like teaching drama and no stuff like that. For them. Got no oh, work for yeah. them. So we're talking to an actor who's, who we've seen many times at, at Stratford. Um, and, uh, you know, so I think they're going to acknowledge that the cultural landscape this country, because let's not beat around the bush, the theatrical it's experience in London generates something like three and a half billion pounds. Apart from anything else. Three and a half billion from... pounds in sales, yeah. but then the ter all the ancillary, central London wouldn't exist without theatre land. Soho would not exist without theatre land. It's all the businesses, oh, it's all the restaurants, it's all the bars, it's all, the, all that sort of stuff, the taxis, you know, all the ancillary sort of industries. So central London, you know, needs this this push. So uh, I'm just asking, how are the cinemas safe? Well, cinemas are safe because they can operate. Theatres can only operate and sustain themselves if they sell a full house. It's a fact of the matter, you know, to pay the rent, to pay the cast, to pay the, just the kit and the caboodle. Um, cinemas are profitable on only 20 to 30 percent capacity. They're a profitable company, even if they only sell a third of the so seats. So they can afford to. So have they people. can afford to have really actively spaced out seats in a cinema, which I think will suit most people. Because whenever I go to the cinema, I just want to sit away from people as much as possible. So you know, and they're going to have earlier screenings. They're going to have more screenings and and all that kind of stuff. So I can see how cinemas can work that. Um, Gabrielle, I'm the same. She should be close with family and friends, but always a distance with with strangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine. Just standing really close to someone I didn't know, like in no. a queue or something. Could you? No, no. I mean, my whole sort of it, my what do you call it? My physical space, my body radar space has completely changed. I mean, I get it a bit with you sometimes. It's like get off. You're breathing on me, and then I realise you're being really affectionate. And then a bit, and now she's pulling away. So let's do a little list of what I've been called today. What have I been called? Yeah, pensioner. Geriatric. Geriatric. Um, slobbing. No, no. You dress Herbal slobbily drinking. sometimes. Herbal drinking. Um, yeah, uh, no, contrary hot drinking lady. But I fancy the pants off you though. <laughs> I do, I do. Um, uh, Holly, I was running out of characters with the message. I meant, I think it will become mostly eradicated but remain as pockets in some areas for some time but not a large number of people. Mm. Ah, okay. Check your phones. Government have put an app on your phones. Go to privacy setting Google. It's on my phone, no permission. And my daughter. Oh. oh. Wow. We should check. Um, Mark, you're being like Carl Pilkington. I love Carl Pil Pilkington. He's so funny, isn't it? Um, Jane Friel. I would sulk, but the thing is, Jane, Jane, Nadia does always call me and she calls me Richard Maidley all the time, so it's a two-way street. It's called banter. Um, McDonald's farmer, I thought if you... if. I thought it a bit rude of Google sneaking that on, didn't you? Oh, I there you go. Look, yeah. Settings, Where is it? settings, then Google. Settings, then Google. Go to settings, and then is there Google down the bottom? Oh, I see. Uh, mm. Google doesn't come up as an option. No. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to going to the cinema. Outlook. Would it be there? Don't know. No. Don't know. Anyway, yeah, we'll have a look. We'll have that. a look we'll after. It tonight. Anyway, guys, hit the thumbs up. It's just be it's just beneath Nads. Hold, and, your, hold your cup of really horrible herbs. And I know that we've just got beneath that. I know we've got new people here today, so please subscribe and hit the like button. And um, it's just beneath that. God, it's so much to think about, isn't it? Oh, and be careful in the heat. Apparently, it's going to get like thirty-five degrees. Yeah, or be something really dangerous. careful, guys. Yeah. Don't be lying out all day because you feel like poo bums yeah. later. Yeah. Um, Swimming baths, good question. I think gyms are, are, are on the agenda today as well, gyms. I mean, if I'm honest, there's one place I would not go, it's a gym. 
It's a lot no, of exhalation and condensation and, and oh, expiration and, and perspiration. I can't stop, babe. And <laughs> exhalation. <laughs> but if they started showing movies in the gym, we would. If they start, yeah, yeah. So do, selling, so showing movies in a Jimmy Wood. I think we need to go and get your Zimmer frame and take it to the garden. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right guys. Oh, that was see lovely. You later. Nice chat. All right, guys. Lots of love, and uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Oh, I've got my dad coming around later for um for his Father's Day dinner, so we will film some of that yes. for the vlog. And, oh, that's nice. Yes, of course we can, and a vlog will be going up later today. All right, lovelies. Bye. Bye.